The Super Mario Bros. Overworld theme. It's probably one of the most recognizable video game songs ever. I mean, who isn't familiar with that playful tune that plays while you're jumping across platforms, stomping on enemies, and sending Bowser to the scalding hot lava below? <laughs> well, actually the castle levels use a different song entirely, but the game was very popular and many people still like it even 36 years later. In 1993, the game was given a complete makeover with better graphics and sound. And this came with a release of Super Mario All-Stars for the Super Nintendo, which also included three other Mario titles previously seen on the NES. These were Mario 2, Mario 3, and Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels, which was actually the Japanese Mario 2, which I believe was never released outside of Japan prior to this. For the most part, other than the quality improvements, these games stayed true to their originals, with the same music, level design, and game mechanics. Focusing on the music though, the only real major differences were the addition of title screen music to some of the games that didn't have this in the original NES versions. These all seem to be based on the Mario 2 title screen music, which itself was based on the melody from the underwater theme from the first Mario Bros. game. However, there were a couple of instances I can remember where the music is slightly different in the All-Stars version. And the one I'm talking about today is one of the parts in the first Super Mario Bros. Overworld theme. You might not have noticed this change, or you might have liked it. Or, it may have bothered you so much that you'd hoped you'd forgotten all about it, and now I've just brought it up again. What was I thinking? But for me, after all these years, I'm still not entirely sure how I feel about it, and I guess now, I'll try to look into why that is. So which part of the song am I referring to exactly? Well, it's this part. Let's have a listen. So I don't know about you, but that's always been my favorite part of the song, and I know I'm definitely not alone on that, given other people that I've discussed the game with, but why is that our favorite part? One of the reasons might be that that section of the song is very different from the rest of it. The percussion changes a little bit, of course, but the underlying harmony is very different. It, it gets a little bit darker, and there's a lot of tension and release going on as the bass part alternates between those two different keys. And I'll get a little bit more into the details on this later in the video, but right now the important part is that this is definitely my favorite part of the song on the NES version. So let's listen to how they've changed it in the Super Mario All-Stars version. <laughs> So, on its own right, there's definitely nothing wrong with it. I like the walking bass line sort of thing that's going on there, and the harmony is a bit more complex. Maybe even jazzier. There's a nice major 7th chord voicing going on in the middle there. But, overall, it just doesn't have the tension that the original version has. And, I mean, it, it accomplishes a similar goal of being different than the rest of the song, but not in the same way, and I just never liked it as much. However... Maybe this is how Koji Kondo wanted it to sound in the first place, and just couldn't because of the limitations of the NES sound hardware. And, if that's the case, then who am I to argue? But, nevertheless, I'm entitled to my own opinion, and so are you. So, let me know. What, what do you think? Which version is better? Did you even notice the differences when you first played the game yourself? So here's something else that's kind of interesting. This is actually not the first time that this theme was remade on the Super Nintendo. And you may not have even known about this. In Super Mario World, after you complete the Star Road map, you go onto the special zone, in which the map screen plays this music. If you wait here for around two minutes, then this happens. Hey, I know that one. I remember being so surprised by that as a kid, it was awesome. But let's see what they did during the section from before. Lo and behold, it sounds a lot more like the original NES version. 
so satisfying, it's just not even close, but again, that's just my opinion. Alright, so now we've got a visual here of the notes that are being played. So let's try to just kind of analyze this in a very basic way. So the song is in C major, and that means it uses these notes mostly. And there's a problem. My keyboard is going into my capture card, which it's got just enough of a delay that it's really uh, annoying to play anything live. So I'm probably not going to be using that much, but we've got everything we need already transcribed, so no problem. So let's start at the beginning here. So the melody is going like right on that C major chord, but here's what's interesting. The bass line is on a D for a while. So what this actually does is this is forming a D ninth chord with the melody on the ninth, which is the E natural. And then, so we've got the D, which is the root, C, which is the flat seven, uh, F sharp, which is the major third, and then E, which is the ninth. So and then it goes back down to the C briefly and then ends on that G. And then we've got a just a plain G chord there. And then finally, the main part goes to the C chord. So we're kind of starting right off with a 2-5-1, where the, the D is the 2 chord, the G is the 5 chord, and um, C is the root chord. And then now we're into the main or the, the first section, I guess. So this part, it is... Uh, basically, all of the notes are following the same rhythm, the bass, the harmony, and the melody. So it's basically just a bunch of three-note chords, and so far it's following C major pretty well. And now here's the second part. So here, we're starting to get into some passing tones, which means that there's some notes that don't really fit in with the C major key, but when it's done the right way, like it's just kind of going over them quickly, it doesn't really matter, your ear just kind of accepts it anyway. So an example of that would be where it's like... So, um... That F sharp is not part of C major, and then... That E flat is definitely not C major because that would make it C minor, um, but then it finally hits that E natural. Uh, so, you know, when you play it at normal speed, it uh, it sounds fine. But if you if you if you hold on to one of those notes, it might sound a little weird. I guess um, I guess the F sharp kind of gives it a nice Lydian sound, so that's not too weird. But the E flat. It's going, you know, it's going from a C minor to a C major, so that's uh, a little bit more unusual, but still not really uh, nothing that your ear can't accept. So let's listen to where that that kind of repeats uh, in the second half of this section. So right there, we have what I think I might have mentioned in a previous video: the flat six, flat seven, one chord progression, which is very common in Mario music, and it has a very, um, like a fanfare-like sound, I guess you could say, um, which it's also found in the the tune that plays when you, after you get the flagpole at the end of the level in this game. So, uh, yeah. So, A, you know, a flat major, and then B flat major and C, so that's the flat six, flat seven, one progression. And now we get to the main event here, this part. So what's happening here, and the, uh, the reason why I think I like it so much, 
is it's alternating between the the baseline is alternating mm -hmm. between an A flat five and a C five arpeggiated chord, I guess. Um, trying to make sure I'm on the beginning of it. So you can you can hear. So that's going A flat, E flat, A flat, which is an A, an A flat five, and then then it goes down to G, C, and G, which is kind of like an inverted C five. So when it's on the A flat, there's uh, there's some tension there, and then the tension resolves when it goes down to the uh, when it goes down to the C uh, part. So let's see if you can hear that. Every uh, every two measures is when it switches between the A flat and the C. So yeah, I just I I think that's really cool and it is my favorite part of the song. So I think uh yeah, so after that it repeats the very beginning of the song. It does a the same thing there. And I guess one thing to note here, I eliminated the flat 7 the uh C. Uh, um, the reason I did that is because actually in the NES version of the song, that note isn't there. The NES can only play three notes at a time, so the flat seven is omitted, so we only have the root, the major third, and the ninth. So it sounds a little bit uh, not quite as complex, but you know, you, you still get the idea that it, it still sounds like the, uh, the same chord, pretty much. And then finally we get to this, which is basically just the conclusion of the song. It's the last part. So I'm kind of, I think I'm kind of hearing a one four two five one progression there, but so other than that, it's basically back to the C major sound. And uh, all right, so let's go on to where that one part, that third section, changes in the Super Mario All Star version. Now, there's a lot more notes here, and just overall, it's it's a bit more complex. So let's listen to this. So, um, so this is a lot more, there's a lot more going on here compared to the original version than what I had thought. Um, you know, the bass line is different. And also we've got a counter melody on the top here. So just kind of descending down the scale. And then the melody part is there basically unaltered so that's that's this top part in the chords here and then there are two harmony notes with that most of the time and then the bass is just kind of the bass starts on an F so that alternating between the A flat and the C is gone so we kind of have, uh, so we start on F, we go up chromatic to the G, and then up a whole step to the A, and then a little chromatic thing down again to the D, um, G, C. So another two, five, one right there. And then the first half of that repeats, and then finally it plays the intro part, just like before. So let's uh, look at, um, Let's try to analyze what sounds we're hearing here exactly in relation to the bass note. So right here, we're starting off with an F major 7 chord. Now we have the F in the bass, the E which is the major 7th, the A which is the major 3rd, and the C which is the 5th. So the melody is note is on the 5th there. And then the counter melody, which is holding right here, is uh, also on the major third. 
It's just an octave above that one right there. So th it holds this for um, a few times. However, note right here, the bass ascends to an F sharp, and this completely changes the function of all the rest of the notes that are still playing. What we actually end up with is uh, an F sharp minor seven flat five chord. So we have the F sharp in the bass, the E has now become the flat seven, the A has become the minor third, and the C has become the flat fifth, or since it's technically the melody, I, I guess I would consider it more a sharp 11. So, you know, a, a minor seven sharp 11 chord maybe, and then the, um, the counter melody is still on the uh, minor third, which has changed from the major third that it was before when the bass was on F. So the melody note goes from that C to D, which changes it from the sharp 11 to the flat 13th. And so we also have a nice chordal voicing right there. So the next chord, now we're at a G on the bass note. So we just have... Uh, I guess kind of a C over G chord, or a C major with a G in the bass, and then the counter melody is also on G, the fifth, so it's it's just an octave, couple of octaves above the bass, and then that goes down to this. Which I guess is an A minor over G, or you could call it a G69 at 11, no third. So normally, you know, G, we would expect a B, which would be the, the major third, or a B flat, which would be the minor third, but we've got no third. So I guess uh, A minor over G would be the easiest way to describe that one. And then we have, uh, I guess an A seventh with no third. So we've got the A, and then we've got the E, which is the fifth, and the G, which is the flat seven. And then here, it actually, uh, the tritone to that comes in. However, by then, the bass has already gone down, so it doesn't really matter anymore. So now the bass note is on a D. So it would just be a D minor seven. So we've got the D in the bass, and then we've got an F, which is the minor third, and then we've got the A, which is the fifth, and then we've got the C, which is the flat seven, and it stays on that for a while. But then, the bass goes up to a G, which makes this an F, or, yeah, an F over G chord here. You could also call it a G 11th with no third, maybe, um, because, you know, we've got the G, and then the F would actually be the flat 7, the A would be the ninth, and the C would be the natural 11th. And then the melody goes up to a D, which is just the 5th, with uh, the bass note and the counter melody. It's on the flat 7 right there. And then finally, we get to that C major 7th. Now that's what... Uh, that's what really stood out to me when I was listening to it originally, um, even though I didn't even notice the first chord right at the beginning of this is also a major seventh chord. But yeah, that one, uh, you know, I really like that with the uh, the melody note on the major third. So we've got the C, uh, and then the G, which is the fifth, the B, which is the major seventh, and then the E, which is the major third. And then the first half of that uh, repeats again. And then it re-plays uh, the very beginning of the song again. So yeah, I really like this version a lot. And the only problem is that in the original version of the song, this is the part that I liked the best, and it was changed. So obviously there's some conflict there. And I almost feel kind of bad because... I'm, I'm sure that it took a lot of thought to rework the harmony here, 
and make it sound different but still kind of the same because it has the same melody just um it's just the notes surrounding it have all changed giving it more of a jazzy sound i guess um but i i think this was just one of those cases where keeping it simple just worked a little better so you know the nes version i just like it a little bit more so anyway i think that's it and let me know what you think and i'll see you next time